Joe and Jeff, welcome to the Green Light Fitness Business Podcast. How are you guys doing today? Doing good, man. Yeah. Outstanding. Thanks for having us. Thank you for being here. Um, I know Jeff and I were lucky enough to be on your podcast a week or two ago, and we had so much fun, so we had to reciprocate the invite. Um, but we are excited to talk to you guys and specifically excited to get into our new partnership. And we'll talk about that a little bit later on. Um, I think it's something that brings so much incredible value to to Greenlight um, and all of our studios and our new studio owners and potential studio owners. So I'm super excited to, to talk about that. Um, but as we start all of our podcasts with our guests, we just want to know a little bit more about you guys. So I was wondering if you could go into, you know, share a little bit more about your backgrounds and how you got started, um, you know, both in you know, your initial careers and what brought you to kind of teaching people how to sell well um, and kind of what brings you to where you are today. So why don't we just start with Joe? Well, thanks, Dan. I would say that I started off in Winnipeg where I'm born and raised working in the exercise equipment industry. And I always, I always had a passion for exercise, health, fitness, and it just came upon me that there, there was a company that was looking for a manager of a fitness equipment retail store. So I started at the age of 18 managing a store, brand new store. This guy put me in there. I went for an interview and he said, yeah, you're exactly what I'm looking for. Two years later, he had brought in a partner and I was interested in also buying into the business and there were too many ladles in the soup. So I said, screw it. At 20 years old, I'm going to open up my own. And that's exactly what I did. And, you know, you guys have people that are in green light that are young and hungry. And the difference is at 20 years old, where I had no clue what I was doing and just, you know, full of piss and vinegar and going for it. You guys are able to show up with, here's a manual, here's a process, here's a system. And I had to develop that all along the way over five years, built the business up and it was a lot of fun and got to a seven figure business as a young man. And then merged with a company called Fitness Depot. And we went from seven locations to 38 locations after I did the merger. We went from seven to 38 in 18 months. We just exploded across the country. So I learned very quickly about systems and sales at a higher level and how sales is really the driver to everything. Unfortunately, the leadership of that company had such a toxic environment while I was there, I needed to leave. So I sold my shares and long and short of it, I got the opportunity to work on the manufacturing side where I started to travel and eventually wrote a book called Boutique Thinking in a Big Box World. And then that opened up a whole bunch of new doors for me to travel even more and work with people in the fitness industry, the bicycle industry, the health and wellness industry, nutrition industries. We fast forward into the pandemic where right at the beginning of it, I was visiting a whole bunch of businesses live in the corporate space, both, both in fitness and wellness and in retail. And with the pandemic, I had to no choice, shut it down. Travel was over. And then I had to go online. It was the best thing that ever happened to me because in that environment, in this environment, I got an opportunity to go virtual and reach more people. And that's where I met this young guy who's on this call with us today. And I'll, I'll let Jeff take over from there. All I will say is that the, the opportunity that now I get to do is train people the habits that help them create buying conversations. And realistically, it's I'm the guy who's helping people make more money. That's exactly what's been happening. I'm the guy that people come to when they say, hey, I need to make more money. Can you help me with my sales? That's exactly what, what, what I'm doing. And I've partnered up with somebody who's also been doing that as well in his career. And I'll let Jeff explain how we met and what we're doing. Awesome. So I'll make it as short as possible. Uh, my, my, my career is in several eras. Uh, the, the first era was a struggling personal trainer. So I became a personal trainer, became, I got my certification in 2008 and I was still in college. Uh, I did training on campus. And then after I graduated in 2010, I tried to keep doing that and realize 
there was no money in it. So, you know, I didn't have the hours available to make the money I needed to survive. So I decided, oh, I'll just be a personal training manager. So then my second era began where I started managing personal training departments of gyms. I worked for a company where I was a subcontractor, found out <laughs> through my wife and I having a tough conversation that uh, although I was crushing it, absolutely, I was the best salesperson in this company nationwide. I wasn't making a livable wage. And I was like, oh, that's neat. So then I found a bigger company out on the East Coast. I'm from Michigan. Uh, we decided to uproot our lives and move across the country to Virginia. And I started working in the DMV area, which is like Maryland, DC and Virginia. I worked there for about four years at a, at a big corporate fitness location, basically 15,000 members per location type place. And I commuted between Long Island, New York, and VA, and I was working in both of those states every single month and managing seven gyms, 300 plus personal trainers, a whole bunch of fitness managers. So I had like ascended that ladder by being the best salesperson at my individual gym. They would give me more and more responsibility. And that was great. And then I was making money, but the cost of living out there is so much higher and the stress just wasn't worth it. So the stress started getting to me and my wife. And then we had our first kid. So after I had my first kid, I was like, well, let's go back home. So we moved back home where the whole family was. And I did the same thing for a really small fitness company. Uh, but I was managing 14 locations, all of which are very small, maybe a thousand to 2000 access based fit members of, of a gym. So that would be what I would consider a super small gym. And uh, they turned out to be kind of a front for some illegal activities. <laughs> so once I found that out, um, I decided to open my own gym. It kind of like it's very much mirrors like Joe's story where he's like, you know, too many. Uh, what did you say, Joe? Ladles, too many in, the ladles soup? in the soup, <laughs> which I've never heard before. <laughs> I was going to comment on that, but I, I, yeah. I just Literally, let it slide. Literally too many cooks every, in the kitchen. Same thing. Yeah. Every day you hang out with Joe, you hear a new saying. So like there, there's another one. <laughs> Write that down. Checkbox for the day. I got a new <laughs> saying from Joe. Uh, so. So, yeah, I was like, I need to get out of here. And the funny thing was I opened this gym. And, and I, I don't know about you guys, but I don't like to like just jump ship and, and just be like, I have no income, start this other thing where I'll have no income for a long time. So I tried to open my gym while working for these guys. They found out they fired me. Uh, it's a story that I went into in depth uh, with a previous company that I worked for. So on their podcast. So that was interesting. Won't go into that today, uh, but did that thing, open my gym. Then I entered my era of the struggling gym owner. And I wasn't making any money. So I started getting into mentorship. I uh, worked with a mentor company that you know just skyrocketed our revenues. And then I started working for that company, entering my mentor era. <laughs> and then uh, I, about six years go by, and right before the pandemic started, I, I sold my gym. Mm -hmm. Not on purpose. There was no collusion there. I did not uh, commandeer and like figure out how to start the on. pandemic. I know, yeah. <laughs> like, the conspiracy <laughs> is that I spurred all of this. Uh, so I sold my gym. And the good thing is, you know, I sold it to my buddies who were coaches for me and they're crushing it still. So I'm happy that they, awesome. they made it through. They wrote it out, <laughs> wrote out that storm and they're crushing it. Good for them. Um, but I bounced. I was like, I'm done with this. I don't, I'm kind of beyond wanting to do this anymore. So then I was a mentor for a long time, uh, essentially six, six and a half years for that company and uh, saw an opportunity with with Joe because Joe actually came to us uh, through a mutual connection. And Joe and I did a sales seminar, which was like awesome. It was mind blowing for a lot of people. We sold it out. Uh, we ended up making a, a pretty cool profit off of it, which was just a bonus because I just wanted the opportunity to speak with somebody who, you know, thought the same way that I did about sales and had such a huge passion for helping specifically people in the in the fitness realm learn how to sell because everybody has this skill set. It's just like latent until you start working on it. Uh, and, and also, Joe and I saw like just this massive issue in the industry and in all industries really when it comes to sales which is that people are too uh like ready for a book or a script or like just tell me what to do and i'll just do that and, the, and we all know like tell me what to do and i'll do it is not a thing you will not do it so there needed to be more to that there needed to be more substance and people needed to put into practice and nobody's doing that like no what we realized was there's you know pick any mentorship company take any guru out there, anybody who is worth their weight in salt, who actually 
you know, knows something or is in the industry that you're in that has owned a business in the industry that you're in that is successful in the industry that you're in. Their program will not have what it is that we offer. And that's why we offer it because it's the most valuable way to train where you have a, a valid environment where like you're surrounded by your peers who are doing something that you're doing and you're being challenged at an appropriate level and you're being corrected live, right? Not just like, hey, you know, send you an email after the session. Like, hey, you said this one thing, don't say that next time. No, it's like right now. And then we're hitting the reset button and we're doing it again. We call it sparring, right? So we're SOS Dojo because when you enter a dojo, like you can expect some sparring. Any of my jujitsu people out there, martial arts people out there, like you can expect that. You're sparring and that's how you get better. But who do you get better with? Do you get better sparring with a white belt, like the most basic level there is? Or do you get better sparring with a black belt? So we put you in with a black belt. You spar with us. And that's how we get people better. So once I realized, you know, Joe's expertise, where he was coming from, uh, the fact that he's got 30 years plus experience, I've got 15 years plus experience, we could combine forces and like really do something here. I decided to leave that mentoring practice and start working with Joe. So that short story was actually very long. I realized that, but uh, <laughs> I was thinking the same thing. It like, combined. And we're done. Thank you very much for coming yeah, up, guys. I, <laughs> I wanted to cover future topics ahead of time. You know, this, this is where I roll. All right. <laughs> it was pretty. Why don't I jump in here, Dan? Yeah, why don't I jump in here? Uh, let, let's talk entrepreneurship um, because I wanted to make sure that our our listeners get a chance to hear a little bit more about. Um, your guys' journey, you guys got some ex in, insane experience outside of the sales as well. And so I want to touch on that just a little bit before we kind of push through into actually talking a little bit more about the high ticket sales system, because it, it's fascinating and it's so powerful. Um, talk to us about your biggest lessons when you're looking for clients. Now, I'm kind of going to leave this open ended for you. You can talk about it with the, with the dojo specifically, um, but I'd actually even like to hear, Joe, your thoughts on when you were building your initial business. How do you go about building avatars? How do you go about finding new clients? How do you go um, from that marketing perspective? And what kind of lessons would you have for some of our listeners? Right out of the gate, my my intention was I need to, as a back then exercise equipment supplier, I need to know who my specific client is. And so I knew it was somebody who was reasonably affluent. So I made a point of any marketing that I was doing, especially at the start, it was targeted to specific zip codes or po postal codes in Canada. I, I knew based on demographic where people lived and who I wanted to have as an ideal client. And back then, again, even at, at 20, I went and sought out help. So there was a program that was put on by the provincial government back then called the business start program. I was the youngest person to ever go into it again, 20 years old. And I got the funding, which I paid back. And it was what they helped me do was develop my customer avatar. Who was my ideal client? And back then it was couples 50 plus years old, double income. Children are already leaving the house back then. Kids tend to stay longer now. And so, once I figured that out and I knew exactly how to, to, to get to people, then it was, how do I set myself up to be the authority in the space? So I'm going back so far where the internet was like so new. <laughs> I mean, this is pre AOL. It's crazy. When you think about it from that perspective, people are probably going, what the hell's AOL anyways. So there were f so few television stations back then. I got myself on as the local expert on fitness and it was those opportunities where I could place myself as the guy. So, and, and, the, and this is important for anyone who's listening. You want to place yourself as what's your positioning statement. You're the world's best at for people who, and you do what? So I'm the world's best exercise equipment provider for people who live in Winnipeg, who are 50 plus years old, who want to live a better quality of life by burning fat and having better energy and vitality. And that was my, right. So th that was the formula. Once you knew the formula, then, okay, where's my audience? 
And instead of spending money, crazy amounts of money that I didn't have back then on advertising, I focused it on how can I serve? Who can I serve? How can I serve? How can I come to your audience and provide value even at that young age? And that's what we're doing now. Yeah. I mean, just to jump in on that, like let's fast forward that to present day and your scenario of the radio ads, TV ads is now, you know, cold DMs and DM outreach as well as Facebook ads. And for, for small businesses and 99.9% .9 repeating of fitness businesses kind of fall into this category because we're all small in comparison to the, uh, you know, gigantic corporations that exist out there, as well as anybody who gets into technology and software. Like we're, we're just small in comparison. Anytime Joe and I would start talking about high tickets specifically related to the fitness industry, some joker who does SaaS sales is like selling software and stuff would hop in there and be like, that's not high ticket. I close seven figure deals every month. And I'm like, all right, cool. We're not talking to you. <laughs> you know what I mean? So this, this is kind of different, right? And the, the, the row as, as everybody would like to see is what's my return on my ad spend. It, it, you can't leverage it the same way with the size business that we are. So like what we recommend to people and we definitely do work on that marketing, how do I get more leads? How do I get more leads? Is really like, like Joe was saying, position yourself as a local expert. First and foremost, why wouldn't you do that? Um, if you're in a brick and mortar space, even more reason to do that. That's the first thing you should be doing. But even if you're online, like just cause you're online, doesn't mean that you don't need to work with somebody who's five miles away from you a mile away from you in your apartment complex. Like you don't know everybody around you needs your help. The, the obesity rates in this country are staggering. Mm. So you have opportunity every single place you look, why would you invest in Facebook ads prior to doing the easiest free thing there is and just focus on organic marketing? So we definitely help out a lot with that. And positioning yourself as a local expert does not mean you have to pay for radio spots and no, do no. all that. It's much, much simpler than that. We usually start with co-branding. Uh, who do you know in your local area that has these connections, has a network that you could just go work with, go meet, go collaborate with, collaborate with as many people as possible mm -hmm. and just start doing that local outreach first. So that's the first thing you should be doing. If you start a business, that's the absolute first thing you do. And I, I tell everybody this too, like, oh, you started a personal training business. Who needs your help the most? Your friends and family. Like, just go reach out to them and say, hey, mom, I'm going to train you and you're going to be my first testimonial. Or you could charge your mom. I don't know what your relationship is with your parents. You can do whatever you want. <laughs> hey, listen, my mom has paid a membership at my gym for 10 years. So <laughs> there you go. Like, there's no reason not to. Like, they want you to be successful. They would be paying another trainer or anyways, like hook them up with a deal if you want to, or charge them full price. It doesn't matter. Like start with friends and family, move out to that local network. And once you've exhausted those options, if you still need leads, now let's talk about other opportunities out there. But too many people skip those first couple steps and then even worse. And, and Joe and I got into this conversation this morning. They'll just outsource it immediately without yeah. knowing anything about how to do it or how it works. You're paying experts to run your ads. You're paying experts to set your appointments like that. That doesn't make sense if you don't know what you're doing in the first place, because they're going to just report back whatever figures they want to you. And you have no understanding. So you're just like, cool, sounds good. Where are my leads? And, you know, once I get those leads, here's the fun part, right? So a little bit of math for everybody. You want leads, right? How, do you want sales? Like leads that lead to sales or just leads? Like, cause I can give you a hundred leads and then you can just hope they sign up or you can uh, get the skill set that you need and really sharpen the ax when it comes to selling so that no matter how many leads I give you, if you were closing 80%, if I give you a hundred leads, you got 80 sales. So the math that we generally do with people is like this, uh, in a month, how many sales do you need to make? Let's say it's 10, right? I need to make 10 sales this month. Well, if you're closing at 80%, then you don't need as many leads as the person closing at 20%. If I'm closing at 20%, the number of leads goes up astronomically. It's a hockey stick. It goes up astronomically. Do I really want to deal with that much extra work and just continue to suck at selling? Or could I work on that skill set so I don't need all the extra ad spend? I don't need all the lost white space in my calendar. And I can just talk to a few people and get the 10 sales that I need. 
Doesn't that make more sense? So like our goal, Joe and I, is to steer people away from this idea that you just need leads. It's just leads. If I just had leads, I'd have this you know, life that I deserve, right? Well, it's not exactly yet. If you had the skill set, you would you wouldn't need as many leads. You wouldn't have to do as much work. You wouldn't have to spend as much money on marketing. Like you could have the life you want and more sooner and easier for less money. Doesn't that make more sense to do it that way? And that's that's a mindset shift for most people. Most people struggle with that. It's just like, no, 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 I'll just pay, you know, this guy said he's going to get me to seven figures or eight figures or nine figures or whatever. As long as I just keep paying his $50,000 a year, you know, fee, I'll get the life I want. Right. It's not always the answer. Soapbox over. I'll just step down from that. All right. <laughs> let's, let's team this with the high ticket sales system and the gap that you are filling in the fitness industry specifically. Can you tell me what I'm going to learn from you that's going to change that? I under, I, you made a very compelling, I'd sign up with you, we did, um, a very compelling argument for learning that skill set. What does that skill set look like? So there's a couple things here. First of all, what Jeff started with when it comes to lead generation is do you want to be busy? Or do you want to be productive? So what's the answer, Jeff? Large. Productive. Yeah. Productive. Right? Yeah. And then in the world Jeff, of, Jeff, Jeff. of green We're both light, Jeff. It's hard. It, yeah. In the, in the world of green light, you guys have a thing called the race to 50, right? Yep. And so do you want to have a full calendar where you're busy, 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 busy? Or do you want to attract the ideal client quickly and be productive and be productive for them. And you're actually not working 80 hours a week. There's one mindset shift, especially in the personal training space. Then what we're doing in our program, and this is what other people do not help you with. We start off with helping you be articulate. Too many people, when they're getting into a quote unquote sales conversation, they're going into sell. Dan, do you want to be sold or do you want to have people buy? Like, do you want to be sold or do you want to buy things? What's, what do you prefer? Buy things. Right. And if those that are listening, do you want to be trying to convince someone to buy from you, AKA you're selling them, or do you want them to be so attracted to your energy and your vibe that they just come in and like, dude, I just want to sign up. And that's, so the, then the question becomes, well, how do you guys do that? It starts off with helping you articulate using the right words. And then we get rid of those words so that you understand how those words are said in terms of your tone, which is 38% of the way we communicate and the body language, which is 55% of the way we communicate. So everybody's focused on scripts. I want the scripts. I want the scripts. The scripts don't mean anything. It's 7% of the solution. It's like having the sheet music to a song. The notes, you need to know the notes. When you get to a point where you've mimicked it so many times, you get rid of the sheet music and then you can play the music. And that's what we're helping you do. So when you articulate it in such a way where your tone of voice comes with passion, what happens to that energy? You develop a confidence which comes into conviction. If you're a personal trainer, people come to you because they don't believe in themselves. They need to believe in you. And that's what we do. We help you articulate to a point where you build on your confidence and then you build on that conviction. And with just a little bit of time, suddenly people are believing in you and they're dropping high ticket so that you can get to your race of 50 real fast. Does that make sense? Crystal, 100%. Yeah, to me, yeah. like Jeff kind of touched on it earlier. Um, just the system that you guys use when you're training people in your program, like there's nothing else like it in the industry. And mm -hmm. the immediate thing that came to my head was it's very kind of with the times, because if you look <laughs> nowadays, it's real world, world experience that people are going for over college or university in college mm -hmm. and university. What are you taught? You're taught theory. You're taught from a textbook, you're taught, you're reading, you're not doing those reps. You're not learning how to speak to people. 
You're not learning how to articulate properly. You're not learning how to deal with, in this case, like sales objections. So I think it's it's very interesting kind of the correlation there um, and how much more effective that type of learning is in a sales environment than just learning the theory or just what you just said, Joe, which is reading a script. Just because you have the script doesn't mean you can sell anything. Mm -hmm. Well, that's just it, because the the fallacy is that there's a perfect consultation that exists out there, right? And a lot of us, nobody's at fault here. Everybody calls it their PC. <laughs> and ultimately, what we want people to create or craft is a BC or a buying conversation. And the way that we do that is by, you know, not only meeting with you in a group of your peers and training you by sparring, but also on top of that, stacking a course and course development that is going to take you from, let's say your VSL to a referral, right? So from gaining interest and in, in creating a, an opportunity, a buying opportunity with somebody with a potential new client through the sales process, what questions do you ask them? How do you get them bought in? How do you get them excited about working with you? How do you get them excited about how they're going to feel after they work with you, after they succeed with you? And through that fulfillment, obviously we work through how to close, how to handle mm -hmm. objections. That's a tiny, tiny piece of this though. That's just the piece we spar. The rest of this is a lot of just taking your business, ripping it apart and like rebuilding those pieces so that you can create a objection prevention system, mm -hmm. not elimination because everybody will always have an objection and objections are good and normal and natural. Wouldn't it be nice if you could make it a lot easier, though, to walk right through those objections by simply asking the right questions, getting somebody so bought in emotionally that at the end they might say something like, I need to think about this. And then you had a simple two step process, just two <laughs> steps that you can handle that objection. And after which they'd be like, yes, please. And you could just say, congratulations, let's get started. And then following that, you know, you're fulfilling the service that your guarantee, your promise, you take care of them, they get the results they want. And then selling continues, they give you a referral. Mm -hmm. And they say, man, this was so great. I wish that everybody that I cared about in my life was experiencing this as well. And they're willing to send somebody your way. That's still sales. So sales occurs in your business from top to bottom. And if you're ignoring it, the thing that makes up literally almost 98% of your business, how does that make sense? You know, how, how does not training and developing the most important major skill set required for you to succeed in business make any sense? And that's where we're coming from. And that's where we're trying to help as many entrepreneurs as humanly possible do that. Well, I think this is a perfect kind of segue into exactly why we partner with you guys to quickly kind of touch on this is that um, at Greenlight, we know one of the biggest questions we get asked specifically is like, okay, you're going to ask us to sell $35,000, $4,000 packages. I don't know if I can do that. And like, we have the systems, we have the playbook, we have the scripts, which are important, not as important though, as the person who's running the script. And by bringing you guys on as our trainers, as the people that are going to take every single salesperson from that is going to be selling green light packages through this intensive, we, we're going to do about 12 weeks with you initially. That's going to, I'm not going to say guarantee because guarantee is not the right word, but it's going to give them, like you said, the skill sets that are necessary for them to be successful. And it's not about knowledge. I love that, Dan. It's about tactics. It's about actually practicing and being around people that are know what they're talking about so they can give you active feedback. And so if you can go into your first sales call already a green belt, let's use the analogy, then all of a sudden, how fast are you going to get to where you want to be? A heck of a lot faster than if you went in there cold. So I just, I'm just so excited about working with you guys and, and bringing this into our system. So we're fired up too, Jeff. This yeah. is the belief that we want to be able to have for the listener and for those people involved in green light is that they believe in themselves so much that it permeates because it's, it's all about the energy. And if you go into this space where it's like, Oh my God, I'm concerned about the economy or I'm, I have to make the sale that you're already lost. Mm -hmm. If we come in where we can help people have that level of confidence and it's just, I can't wait to talk to this person so I can help them and I can serve them and they feel that, 
what do you think is going to happen to that rush to 50? Yeah. And we've that? defined the process, which yeah. a, a, again, on top of sparring, another thing nobody else is doing is defining your level, your growth process mm -hmm. here, your level of success. So if you go work with a coach or a mentor, are they defining your steps towards that success level? Or is it just, you know, Hey, submit your numbers. We'll take a look Ah, you're doing pretty good. Like how good am I doing? Like how much have I progressed since we started together for us? There's nine levels. When we take you from a white belt to a black belt, it's defined. We know exactly what you need to do to succeed each level to go from your, your white to your yellow, to your orange, to your green, to your blue and beyond. Like we know every single one of those steps and exactly what you have to do. And we can tell you when you've excelled, when you've stepped up to that next mm -hmm. belt level. And by the time you hit that black belt, I can tell you, I guarantee you, you're not going to step into a single buying conversation and like be worried. You might have that nervous energy and that's a good thing. You can channel that in a positive way, but you're not going to feel like maybe you do right now where it's like, I have to make the sale. Oh man, if I don't, if I don't do this, if I don't hit my, my 50, Jeff and Dan are going to be so mad at me and I'm going to have problems with my franchise. I'm not going to live the life that I, I want to live. No. You'd be like, I got this. I can have little butterflies. That's okay. That's normal. Like every professional athletes have butterflies before they go into a competition mm -hmm. situation. Like that's what it's about. You just have to channel that energy and you're not going to be worried about how to channel that energy. And you're not going to be worried about whether or not you sell. You're just going to care about how you can help. And you're going to yeah. go in with that positive mindset and energy because you're a black belt. And that's, so that's that the level. beauty of it, Jeff, is learn do teach. So it's just like as a personal trainer listening to this, you had to learn it first, then you had to go and do it. And now you're at a point where you're teaching it and you're teaching as a personal trainer, you're training others. Well, guess what? You're stepping into the dojo to learn and then we make you do it. We make you do it and you're going to fail along the way. And don't worry, it's a safe place to make mistakes. And when you get to that black belt level, now you can teach it. What do you think happens when you really get to a place where you get to a point where you can teach something, then you really master it. And Jeff's a perfect example of that. It's really interesting. And, and I know that you guys work with a lot of fitness professionals and not everyone you is a fitness professional that you do work with, but what you teach, you know, crosses any industry really. But when you look at the fitness professionals that you've been working with and just being so knowledgeable about that industry, you know, what do you think has fundamentally changed about the fitness industry since you guys had started working with fitness professionals? I know, Jeff, you've been in the, well, actually both of you have been in the game for so long in fitness. Um, but since you specifically started coaching fitness professionals, what do you think has fundamentally changed over the last five, six years? Burley, you go first. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'd say the the mindset shift away from access has become more prominent. Mm -hmm. um, whereas I, I even four years ago, man, even three years ago, people were talking a lot about like, oh, I'll just go twenty four seven and like, you know, that'll buffer my expenses, I, you know, and all this other stuff. And then they realized they needed a bigger space, and then the mm -hmm. pandemic destroyed all hopes and dreams. Like you just you can't rely on that big space. So I see a lot of people, you know, kind of like where you guys are coming from, where it's, you know, instead of getting busy, getting big, like I could get busy getting small. And by being small, I can still have the life I want while also doing less work, becoming less fatigued, less like uh, burned out. And, and if I'm going high ticket, I can make it work. Right. So I'm, I'm seeing a lot more acceptance of that. I remember starting to have that conversation with gym owners as a mentor in like 2016. Be like, hey, what if it was just totally fine that you only had 75 members at your CrossFit gym? You know, what it, how could we make that work? Because they were always hustling. And around that time, they were doing a lot of these six week challenges. And like I did that for two years. It almost killed my gym, actually. Uh, it was probably one of the worst things I did to my gym. So, you know, people were starting to realize like more isn't more, more isn't better, right? Well, more is just more. It's not better. Like more, mm -hmm. more is better became like this fallacy. And then we started thinking, what if we could just make the money we needed off of? 
50 to 75 people and we could create amazing relationships and amazing success stories with those 50 to 75 people because we weren't so just bogged down with the work required for 150 members. What if we could do that? And now we're doing it and people are like, yeah, I'm on board. High ticket. Great. Sounds good. Like it's so much easier to have that conversation. So that's, that's a big thing that I've noticed. Joe. Okay. So again, I'm going way back when <laughs> back in 1991, cause that's literally when I started in the, in the fitness and, and I was working uh, part-time at a gym. And back then it was all about who had the bigger gym, who had the brands of equipment. Like if you had hammer strength back then, it was a big deal. And now, you know, we all know you could have, hey, it was a box, right? You could have it in a garage and you can be uber successful. It's not about price. If there's anything that's shifted in the last five to six years, pre-pandemic, in the pandemic, and now, especially now where, because I was just recently on a podcast with someone who is a coach to online fitness coaches. And he said, everybody's flat. And he's like, what are we doing for leads? Help, help us out. What do you think? And it's like, well, if you're selling based on price and all you're looking to do is sell a program, you're missing the mark. Hmm. Come back to how do people feel about you? They, be, they don't believe in themselves when they show up. So they need to believe in you. And when they believe in you and you provide them with the results that they're seeking, they become loyal. So it's just exactly what Jeff talked about. Loyalty now is the, is the brand. And it's not about necessarily the green light brand, which is a phenomenal brand and everything that you guys have done around that. The green light franchise, franchisee, you are the brand within the brand. And it's that person. I'm, I'm going to use Austin as an example. He's such a brand within the people in his community in Chico, California, that they, they love him so much, they'll never leave. Like they'll never leave because they love the guy. He's done for them what others have not. That's what's changed. And you guys are helping people do that. And I'm, I'm excited to just be a part of it. That's very cool. We're very excited to be a part of it. I, we've already kind of grouped together some of the best people in the industry. And obviously you guys are now a part of that story as well. So we're so grateful to have you guys. I want to, I want to kind of put you on a quick, Jeff, I'm going to need you to keep this within like a minute. Okay, buddy. I'm just going to shorten this one up right up. All right. I do my best. <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing. Uh, one thing people should, let's, let's limit it to fitness because that's going to be our audience. What is one thing fitness people should start doing and one thing that fitness people should stop doing to improve their sales right now? One thing they should start doing is uh if you're not already doing this charge what you're worth immediately um for example if you're closing too many sales if you're closing 100 percent, you're not charging enough the the best you can close is 80 percent. period if you're closing over 80 percent, you're not charging enough so that and you can't live off of wonder bread for the rest of your life so charge what you're worth okay uh thing they need to stop doing uh Y'all need to stop focusing on the features and start focusing on the benefits of why I should work with you. Don't tell me all the ins and outs of your program and all the science behind it. I don't care. I don't care. I only care that it has worked and it will work for me. So be convincing in that way. Talk to me about how I'm going to feel after I work with you. Is that close enough to a minute? I was like, minute 45. You kind of added a second start in there, but that's fine. I'm going to let it slide. Yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So. I'll go in with that. Uh, what you need to start doing is come in with that right energy, have a state change when, and when I mean the, change your physical state, if you got to do 10 push ups before you get on a call with someone, do it 10 squats, do it. Just stand up, change your state that changes your energy. It's if you're, it, if you're going to do anything, that is going to be a major component. What you need to stop doing is stop trying to sell. People don't want to be sold. So stop selling. I know it sounds completely weird from the guy who's known as the sales sensei. 
I'm not looking to sell you anything. I'm going to ask you questions just like what Jeff said. I'm going to build so much rapport with you and get to know you. And I'm going to provide you with the solution, the exact solution that you need. I'm going to give you exactly what you need. And it's going to cost you an amount of money where you're going to be invested. That's the thing. You're going to be invested. And those that pay, pay attention. So stop selling. Stop selling. Start buying conversations. I love that. So uh, maybe we should just end it there, Jeff. I think so, buddy. I think that's as good as it gets. Um, yeah, that that was incredible. It's great advice. I mean, what you guys are doing, you know, in this sale, we, we went over it a bunch a bunch of times in this podcast. Like, I am very very excited to be working with you guys. I think your program, like I described earlier, there's nothing like it out there. And we've all done sales. If you're listening to this podcast as a personal trainer. You've been doing sales, whether you think you are or not, you've done it. Um, some of you do it a lot better than others. Um, and the only way you can really get better is with reps. And when you can get reps from people who are the best in the industry, you do it. You listen to them, you take their advice because they have gotten to where you want to go. Um, and so they'll be able to get you there a lot quicker. And so, you know, our partnership with the, with the dojo is our green light this year probably um we're super excited about it and we want to thank you guys for coming on the pod today and um i'm sure we'll be chatting to you very very soon so thanks guys thank you absolutely thanks for having you guys